This week on John Thielen's Destination Fish, we start on a midsummer walleye bite. About the time the water warms up, so does the spinner bite, and today is no exception. Then it's an early summer morning chasing largemouth bass with Bruce Stanton from Pradco Fishing. John Thielen's Destination Fish is brought to you by Lindy Fishing Tackle and Alumacraft Boats. There he is, right on that corner. This fish bit it right when I came around the edge of the structure. He bit it right on the corner and got here. 10 feet of water, not super deep. Good keeper fish to start if we can get him in the net. Look at that. Man, this time of the year, spinner fishing is tough to beat. Midsummer. In one of those times of the year where a lot of times fishing starts slowing down a little bit. People start complaining a little bit that fish are maybe on the in-between and they're a little bit harder to catch. But I'll tell you what, spinners at this time of the year fish like that one right there. It's a great 15, 16 inch walleye to start. Spinners are the best way to get them because they're switching over to eating crawlers. They're still on the back end of eating leeches, but here's what spinners do. They allow you to cover water and put something down there that's gonna grab their attention with that spinner blade. Man, I'll tell you, that's one of my favorite ways to catch fish, and it is doggone effective, especially in those July and August months. There he is. That feels like a pretty good fish. You know what? I missed this fish, and he came back and bit again for me. You know, you hear people talk about walleyes following crankbaits, and they do, but they'll follow a spinner too, another good fish. Look at that. Did something a little different here. I crept up a little bit in depth. Came up just a little bit, and this guy was sitting up on, the, on this top ledge. Another great fish. Man, spinner fishing is so much fun. Let's talk location real quick. Here's what I'm fishing today. All I've done to sit here and catch these fish is pick a spot where the wind is coming in against the ledge. Now I'm fishing all rocks here. And these fish, what they're doing is they're moving up and down. I'm getting most of them in 12 to 13 feet of water along this rock ledge. But I'll tell you what, that fish right there came right in 10 feet of water. And I got a couple of them earlier right out off the edge in, you know, 15 feet of water. So you don't want to be afraid to do this with your Minn Kota. Work your way back and forth along these ledges because these fish, they're all active with this wind coming in. But that's the biggest key today. When you get into this time of the year, Look for fishing the wind. It's gonna put you in a position where all the bait is being pushed up on a spot. That's gonna congregate the walleyes and you're fishing on top of active fish. One of the other great things about fishing spinners on a day like today, when you look at this wind, it's making boat control a little bit hard. My speed is bouncing back and forth between where I want to be, between 1.1 one, one and 1.3, one, but every now and then I'm bouncing up to 1.5, I'm dropping down to 0.9. Here's the thing, as long as you're making those constant line adjustments, keeping that bottom bouncer down in the right spot, you can be going any of those speeds and these fish will bite. There he is. Got him. You know, sometimes, that initial reaction that you have is always to pull back on a fish right away when he bites. But I'll tell you, sometimes, especially spinner fishing, you'll just pull your bait away from a fish doing that. So one of the things you'll notice that I do, I almost play a tug of war with him. I just hold some pressure on that tip. I hold pressure on a nice walleye. Good fish. Stay on there, buddy. Really nice fish. Look at that. But all I do is try to hold pressure on him. Make him feel me so that he feels like that bait is trying to get away. Because if you don't, what often happens is he might just feel like something's not right and let go. But if you keep him wound up, that fish right there, he's gonna keep eating his way up it. And that's what that guy right there did. Great fish. Upgrade your fishing game with the 2024 Alumacraft Multi-Species Fishing Boat. Loaded with features like large aerated live wells, ample rod storage, large front casting decks, and the exclusive double-plated 2XB hull. 
This series delivers on performance and all-day comfort, making it in a must for anglers who demand excellence. Contact your Alumacraft dealer to pre-order your 2024 boat and take your fishing adventure to the next level. Hi, this is Greg from Outdoors Again in Bedette, Minnesota. I'd like to personally invite you to stop in and visit us here at Outdoors Again, where we carry the largest selection of fishing tackle, bait, firearms, and ammo in northern Minnesota. We are the home of the Jig Buffet. We are conveniently located on Highway 11 in downtown Bedette with plenty of parking to accommodate boats, wheelhouses, and trailers. We are your one-stop shop for all of your outdoor needs, including bait, tackle, firearms, ammo, and much, much more. We look forward to seeing you here at Outdoors Again. Mega Live Imaging shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage, all so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action. Only from Humminbird. Lacan's Marine in Fairbolt, Minnesota offers everything you need to enjoy your time on the water with family and friends. Lacan specializes in Yamaha-powered Alumacraft boats, and you can bet they have the model and horsepower you are looking for in their extensive inventory. Lacan's also offers parts and accessories along with an experienced service department that will keep you on the water. And when fall arrives, they can handle your winterization and storage needs. Get out on the water this summer with a new Yamaha powered Alumacraft boat from Lacan's Marine. There he is. Feels like a pretty good fish. Yeah, this one might be a decent. Yep, another good eye. Come here, buddy. Look at that. Another great fish. Just cookie cutters. I mean, just beautiful walleye stacked up on this thing this morning. <laughs> Look at that. I'm gonna show you what we're using because it's simple. Been around forever. Caught walleyes like that one right there since the day it was brought out. Little Joe spinners. Now today, I'm fishing the walleye spinner with crawlers. Okay, now the walleye spinner was actually designed in its inception for fishing minnows, and then there's a crawler harness as well, but here's the deal. There's a lot of small fish in here. A lot of anywhere from 12 to 14 inch fish. And a lot of what happens sometimes when you're fishing a crawler harness is you're fishing that whole crawler, and ultimately sometimes you end up in a scenario where those little fish come up and just constantly bite the back end of that crawler off. So what I did is I switched over to the walleye spinner because the walleye spinner is a single hook, it's a little bit longer. And all I'm doing is threading that crawler on and then I'm nipping it off. So ultimately what happens is I'm making it so that they get over the top of the hook, okay? Whole variety of colors. I'll tell you what, it's just hard to beat a walleye spinner. You know, I'm fishing pretty, pretty rocky stuff today. And this little Joe walleye spinner or the crawler harness, if that's, if we were in a scenario with less small fish, either one of them, man, they're so tough because ultimately I'm snagging up a lot, okay? You're not seeing me constantly turning around because I'm snagged up, but I have to, okay? I'm trying to hold that bouncer just above bottom, but every now and then you do get snagged up and you're banging along in the rocks and these things are tough. They're tied out a tough line, so you're not gonna have to deal with the issues. Awesome, awesome spinner rigs. Now there's two times I fish super lines. One is when I'm jigging. Second is when I'm pulling spinners in rocky areas. Now, if I'm pulling, ooh, there's a fish right there. It's a good fish too. If I'm pulling spinners in areas that aren't snaggy, I'm not so worried about it. At that point, I have no problem pulling monofilament. But when you're fishing what we're fishing here, stuff where you're gonna get snagged, super line is awesome because what it allows me to do is turn around every time I get snagged up, 
and snap it out of there so that I don't lose. Ooh, yeah, nice walleye. Look at that one, big fish. But it allows me to get out of snags. I don't end up in a scenario where I'm constantly snagging up and breaking line because that super line, I can give it a snap and it's so strong. Look at that fish, big fish. But that super line allows me to get out of snags by simply just turning around, going back, getting on the back side of the snag, giving it a snap, and I can get out, get right back in the water and chase those. <laughs> what an awesome fish that is. What an awesome morning, man. That is good stuff. <laughs> There's one. That feels like a pretty good fish. All I did there is I just set that sinker down, that bottom bouncer on the bottom. And I was doing two things there. One, I'm making sure my depth is right. But the second thing that I'm doing when I do that is I'm stopping my bait. It gives them that trigger point. Oh yeah, nice walleye. Look at that. I just set that thing down and this guy grabbed it. Man, this has been a fast, and fun morning of fishing. And I can't think of anything a whole lot more fun than pulling spinners and catching fish like that that are just nonstop on the chew. What a great morning of fishing. Get out and do this. When you get into that July, even into that August time frame, when everybody starts thinking, boy, bites are slowing down a little bit, live bait's not quite as effective anymore, find those wind-blown areas Find those spots where those fish are gonna congregate, pull spinners along the edge of it. This would be too hard to pull a crankbait on. I'm gonna tell you right now, but as far as fishing it the way I was able to fish it this morning, a spinner was the easiest way. I didn't have to worry about my speed and I didn't have to worry about the scenario I was putting myself in as far as working the contours because I could precisely work around it. You could never do that with a crankbait with all that line out. That's fun fishing right there. Gallus Marine in Wisconsin Rapids has everything you need to get your family out on the water this summer. New and used boat sales include top brands like Alumacraft Boats and Berkshire Pontoons, powered by Yamaha Outboards. The parts and service departments will keep you up and running all summer long. Whether you're looking for a Yamaha-powered fishing boat, ski boat, or a pontoon, Gallus Marine has you covered, and when fall arrives, they'll be there to handle your winterization needs. Stop in and see them at their convenient central Wisconsin location, or look them up at gallusmarine.com. This is your tackle. You use it to catch this, or this, or this. You also use this, and that, and these. This, this is your environment. So is this. You love it, live for it, but it will turn this into that. This is the Flambeau Z-Rust Max Tough Tainer Series. These are fully infused with exclusive Z-Rust VCI anti-corrosion technology. This is a U.S. Naval battleship. The same Z-Rust technology used here has been used on those. This is the next level of tackle management. Built to fish, built to last. What's your tackle worth? Whether you crank it, jig it, flip it, slow roll, or troll, Striker Technical Apparel gives you the freedom and confidence to fish, no matter your style, no matter the weather. Because with Striker, when it's on, it's on. It's on. Today, anglers fish longer. Today, anglers fish harder. Today, anglers rely more than ever on their electronics. It all comes down to catching more fish, and today, anglers rely on amped outdoors lithium batteries, period. This is the place. Warner's Dock in New Richmond, Wisconsin is the place to find your new Suzuki-powered fishing boat or pontoon. 
The new redesigned show floor at Warner's Dock is home to a large inventory of pontoons and fishing boats from various manufacturers as well as a complete lineup of Suzuki outboards. The service and parts department have you covered from beginning to end, including off-season storage solutions. Stop in and see the team at Warner's Dock for all your boating needs. This is the place. Next up, we cast for early summer largemouth bass as they cruise the shallows, exposing a sparse cover pattern that's available and overlooked on lakes across the Midwest. John Thielen's Destination Fish is brought to you by Rebel Lures and Alumacraft Boats. Look at that. That's how you like to start a day, my he friend. He came out and got that. <laughs> Good fish to start, too. Look at Followed that. Followed that quite a ways. Yeah, he did. Look at that. Good fish to start. There we <sighs> go. Man, early summer largemouth fishing. I'm with Bruce Stanton today from Pradco, Pradco Fishing. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about fishing largemouths early in the summer. And this can be a tricky period, but I'll tell you what. You can get on fish like that, you get on bites like this, this is the first cast. He said something about a first cast jinx, now I'm nervous. But I'll tell you what, that start right there is exactly what we're looking for. That's a chunky little guy. Top water fishing, man, how do you do that, huh? It's the best way to fish, you get to see everything. It, you know, it really is, it makes it visual, and when it, when it becomes visual, it becomes a lot more fun. Well, what you did right there, you, you're making me work it all the way back to the boat, because he hit about halfway from that weed line. Yeah, that's a great start. You know, if you just get started bass fishing, one of the things I tell you is you're gonna see it as the day goes on. You look around this boat today, we got six rods out. We've got some frogs tied on, we've got pop bars, and, and we're planning on throwing some yum dingers. We're gonna, we're gonna throw everything at them today as the progressions move throughout the day. But when you're trying to pick those lures to fish, a perfect time to fish a pop bar is when you're fishing some of that more sparse cover like what we're fishing here. Because with two exposed treble hooks, you don't wanna throw this into your thickest stuff. So this is a great lure to start with in your sparse stuff and out off the edges. And then you, you know, when those fish, if they get up in that thick, thick stuff, that's when we're gonna go to our frogs. And then if they get out into that 10, 12, 15 feet of water, that's when you're gonna see us go over to the jigs and the plastics. So when it really comes down to it, just following that progression, especially when you're fishing early mornings like we are here, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just deadly. You're gonna catch fish as you move through all those different baits for the different scenarios. It's early June. The water temps are in the high 60s, with cool morning air temps in the low 60s, pushing through the 70s as the sun rises. Light 5 to 10 mile per hour winds are making for the perfect morning to throw topwater lures on glass calm water. Rebel Pop R's in black chrome and blue chrome are the ideal baits for probing the sparse cover the bass are cruising in this morning. Oh! Man, he came out and got that. That looks like a good one, huh? Feels pretty good. Man, they are firing. A little bit on the outside today, aren't they? A little bit on the outside. You know, location-wise, when you look at this, I know with bass fishing so often, you always want to think about being up in the thicket of stuff. But at this time of the year, when you're talking early summer, before you've got a lot of that emergent weed growth, these fish, they'll cruise the outer edges, they'll cruise in tight, you gotta really work. Oh, that's a good bass there. Look at that. <laughs> but here's the deal, you really gotta work your way through all different depths to find exactly where the fish are because they'll cruise the outer edges as much as they'll cruise the inside stuff. Equipment we're using today, it's pretty simple. Most everybody's got a rod and reel set up like this already in the rod locker. Just a medium to a medium heavy spinning rod. 
These are seven and a half feet long. And then what we're doing is we're using 10 pound braid and we're cranking that drag down. Now, when we switch to some heavier stuff today or switch to frogs where we're trying to pull fish out of that cover, where it's a little bit thicker, that's when you're gonna need to go to a, a little bit more stout rod in that bait caster. But man, I'll tell you, what you've got in your rod locker, you're gonna be able to catch fish with pop bars. Pretty easy to fish them. We are l &M. We are a third generation family owned business that has proudly served the Northland for over 60 years. We carry products that cater to the communities surrounding our stores. We service what we sell and we can equip you with everything you need for your next outdoor adventure. We are family. We are l &M Fleet Supply. Dan's Southside Marine in Bloomington, Minnesota is one of the largest Suzuki outboard dealers in the country. Pair that power up with a brand new Alumacraft boat, you have the ultimate package. Dan's carries an extensive inventory of Suzuki powered Alumacraft boats, meaning you will find the model that fits your family and be on the water this spring. Dan's also offers an experienced service staff and a large parts and accessories department that is sure to have everything you need. Sales, service, parts, winterization, and storage, Dan's Southside Marine does it all. Take your trolling game to the next level with the all-new Trollmaster Pro Angler. The Pro Angler pairs with your current Trollmaster system or can be purchased as an all-inclusive kit while still compatible with Panther Electrosteer models. New features include increased battery capacity to keep you fishing longer and Strike Mode, a built-in function that increases your speed in short bursts every two, four, or six minutes to trigger more strikes. Up your trolling game and catch more big fish with the all-new Trollmaster Pro Angler. Zippo Bay Resort is the premier resort on the south shore of Lake of the Woods. Spend the day on one of Zippo Bay's six 30-foot charter boats or bring your own boat to explore the pristine waters of the big lake. Log cabins in various sizes have all the amenities while clean and comfortable housekeeping cabins are also available. Spend a day at the pool and hot tub, play on the water toys, enjoy great food and drink in the lodge, and relax around the campfire in the evenings with family and friends. Make Zippo Bay Resort on Lake of the Woods your next summer getaway. This fight is between you and the fish. The lake may get unruly, but our motors quiet the noise. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. go there you go good one yeah this is a good one feels like a good one well we doubled up mine's not as big as yours but i don't know that this one's as big as i thought he was but he's not a bad fish you gotta love a double it's when you know you're catching fish right That's come right. here buddy good bass oh. yeah i think i'd have to push mine out closer to the camera <laughs> <laughs> it's fun stuff that's fun stuff man even when you get a couple fish like that that aren't giants, they're just fun on top water because they're just, they, they're up, they're flying in that shallow water. And you know, the thing about bass that I always say is, you know, you look at, you look at a walleye, a lot of times you're fighting a walleye up. You're fighting a bass horizontally. And, <laughs> and that makes that fight just bigger. Oh, got another one, God. two casts in a row. <laughs> ah, he's off. God, he crushed it. Felt better. Oh, he came there, back and got it, John. Got him again. Came back and got it. Looks like a good one. Ooh, that looks like a good one in the rod. That's a better fish. Yeah. Good fish. Look at that one. That's a nice one. Yep, he came back and got it. Not something else how aggressive they'll get. I think it gets competitive. You know, you get, get all these fish wadded up, and they say, if I don't go get it, somebody else will. Right. I traveled a long way to get front-ended by John Thielen, but the one thing I'll compliment you on is 
normally when I sit in the back of your walleye boat, I'm, I'm kind of breaking my ankles because I got big feet and there's not a lot of place to stand, but you got this add on deck. And believe me, when you're standing back here all day bass fishing, it's really nice. Yeah, you know, Alumacraft does a heck of a job coming up with solutions that can make it so that these boats can be multi-species. And on this Comp 205, that simple little fold up deck makes it so you got a full casting platform back there and then underneath it, I'm storing stuff. So it's, it's a slick deal. I mean, it turns these boats from a walleye boat to a bass boat in a heartbeat. Well, and it keeps me from standing up next to you all day long, because I, I wouldn't stand back here if I didn't have this deck back <laughs> Boy, here. Boy, would we be fighting for a cast <laughs> up here. <laughs> Good fish. Good God. Good fish. This is the biggest fish of the day right here. Wow. This is a big fish. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, I got one too. Do you? This yeah. is a this is a big fish I got, Bruce. <laughs> I think mine's good too, John. Look at this fish. Look at this. Come here. Oh. Oh boy. I'm just gonna lift Look at this, this guy. Right here. Oh! Hey. Look at this. Look at this. Hey. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's a double right there. Whew. That right there, that is what topwater fishing <laughs> is all about. That's a heavy fish. That's two good ones. And you know what's funny? Those fish, they were cruising together, weren't they? They were. They they, were. In, in size class, they were cruising together. And I mean, this fish is pushing four pounds. Oh, that yeah. one's oh, yeah. three and a half. <laughs> Man, that is good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Woo! There you go. How about that? Oh, oh yeah! yeah. Look oh, at that. Yeah. <laughs> you called that one. Automatic right there, man. Holy cow. Good yeah. fish, too. He's good another fish. one of those that hit farther out. Yep, look at that one. Look at that. Another good fish. Look Boy, it's heating ball. up. It's heating up in general. But it just goes to show you these fish they'll still hit. We had to get rid of the rain gear. It's finally, finally getting warm. But what a day for bass fishing. You know, one of the things I'll say too is when you're thinking top water, I know it's not always the easiest thing in the world to do to fish around a weather forecast. But I'll tell you what, if you can find one of those weekend days or a day you're available to fish that is gonna be flat like this, go top water fishing. Because I'll tell you, this is that time where these fish can see it the best, they can hear it the best. And man, I'll tell you, it's maybe the most fun too. I saw that fish coming. <laughs> I mean, that was cool stuff right there. Closed captioning for John Thielen's Destination Fish is brought to you by Formula Propeller.